I love that this event actually turned into a more intimate event. Um, it's not my first time in Chicago, but the first time that it's been sunny and there hasn't been snow on the ground. Um, so as uh, Paul mentioned, I work at Patreon. Um, it's a membership platform for creators. Before that, I spent about a decade uh, building out and running community events for Yelp. Um, so I'm gonna talk a little bit about both of those platforms. Obviously one is B2C. Patreon's actually more of a B2B business, so um, I'm going to talk about more about how communities are built um, in both those contexts. Um, but first, I'm going to play a little game with you all. Um, since I'm talking about community um, and connections between people, I thought it would be fun if we did a bit of an icebreaker exercise that is very simple, so nobody has to get up. Um, and really, we, you know, at Patreon, sometimes at our all hands, uh, we start our uh, presentations with an icebreaker just to even though we work with e each other sometimes it's nice to learn new things about uh, our community um, and so this is called raise your hand if and I'm going to ask you to do exactly that if uh, some if, if something on the screen is something that you identify with um, while you're doing this also look around and see who else shares those things with you okay ready to get started Okay. Raise your hand if you traveled to Chicago today. Okay. Uh, raise your hand if you're a local. Yay. Okay. okay. Yeah. You rock. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, and then raise your hand if it's your first time in Chicago. It's exciting. Yay. A lot of people have been to Chicago. Um, okay, great. Um, now we're gonna get a little bit personal. Raise your hand if you have a reptile as a pet. Oh, okay, yes. Uh, raise your hand if you have a cat. A cat? Right there. Um, I added a visual. And uh, raise your hand if you have a dog. A lot of dog people, always. Okay, great. Okay. Food allergies. Okay, not too many of those. Pescatarians. Vegetarians. Vegans? A little bit of everyone there. Okay. Um, raise your hand if you have a podcast. I see you back there, Kim. Um, play an instrument. Decent amount, decent amount. Are you in a band? No, no bands, okay. What about paint, do you paint? Okay, nice, artistic. Uh, dance, you, you dance, perfect, dancers. Uh, what about singing? Anybody a singer here, no karaoke? Oh, Kim, I see you. Um, what about, have you published a book? Anybody here published a book? Ooh, very nice work, guys. Uh, do you scuba dive? <laughs> uh, have you run a marathon? Nice. <laughs> So we have some talented people in the room. Um, excellent. And so this is the exercise is a great example of identifying connections between people. Um, there's so many opportunities we have to connect with other people, and we're constantly writing the story of our lives as we learn new things and enter new communities. And with the internet today, it's easier than ever to connect with like-minded people. Um, and what we can do through our events is really bring those people together, as we've shown. Um, today, so today I'm going to share uh, a few stories about how I've collaborated with, collaborated with communities and learned from them um, to make really impactful events and event programs. Um, I'll take you through identifying your community, asking questions, uh, being intentional, being human, fostering connection, all that fun stuff that makes people still want to buy tickets to our events even if virtual reality takes over. Okay, great. So first off, I'd like to take you back in time. This is my origin story time. Um, okay, so it was 2005. Not that long ago, actually. Um, but I was a fresh-faced psychology grad. I joined a small startup in San Francisco, hoping to take on a little thing called the Yellow Pages. 
Um, this is actually a sketch uh, of logo ideas from back in the day. Uh, you can see kind of the process behind building our brand identity here. Um, our original concept was actually more of an Ask Jeeves approach. Um, Ask Jeeves is super cool. Um, so really someone asks, hey, anybody have any dentist recommendations? And the community responds. Um, and we had a small feature on the side of the site where people could just write reviews of things without any questions being involved. Um, and what we found, Q&A was like not picking up, but people were just writing reviews about local businesses uh, without being attached to any questions. So we responded to this feedback from the community. We you know, switched things around and built out that feature. So Web 2.0, we were inspired by the idea of user-generated content. Instead of paid writers and professional journalists, let's just allow anybody to write a review anywhere. Instead of paying them, let's not. <laughs> Sounds easy, right? No. Well, <laughs> people actually really did like the idea of sharing their favorite places online. Um, but there was, what we found is there was something missing. There was like a really small kind of super group of super users who were writing reviews. Um, and you know, every one of these people who was writing a review, we had thousands of people reading the reviews. And we we're like, well, OK, we need to get more reviews on there in order for there to be something for people to read. So we thought that if we grew that, you know, that central kind of smaller community of writers, then we'd have that orbit effect um, and have more readers. So there was our growth strategy. This is actually Jeremy Stoppelman, um, the CEO of Yelp and founder. <laughs> and we, we were Yelpers. We were in it. Um, and so these were postcards we made um, you know, building out our community. Um, okay, so who are these people? What are their commonalities? There certainly were a lot of differences. There's introverts, there's extroverts, dog lovers, vegans. Remember that exercise we just did earlier? Um, we really needed to figure out the unique qualities that drove these local mavens. And we also needed to give a name to this group, some sort of like self-identifier so that we could create a common identity and brand for our community. In fact, everyone who wrote a review on Yelp actually had something in common, Yelp. Um, so specifically sharing opinions and interests in local businesses was really a commonality and we found that it could be enough as long as we created a brand for our community. Um, thus, the Elite Squad was born um, and because we needed to foster this sense of identity and connection and create like this idea of like, you're part of something big, events came into play. Um, so that was really the best way. It's the vehicle that drove all of our viral marketing and word of mouth marketing. Mm -mm. Hello. OK. So creating a brand for your community is just as important as creating a brand for your events, your company. Um, are you in or are you out? Uh, are you part of something or are you outside of it? There are those that attend and those who do not, and we want those who do not to want to attend next time. Um, by creating something instantly recognizable, obviously we had a ton of branding with our swag. We always were tongue in cheek. We always had our message across. Um, but we created this tie that bound you know, all these different communities. We, at the, you know, we started with five cities. It grew into over 100 cities where we were having these events. But if you were a Yelp elite in Chicago, you had something really strongly in common with the Yelp elite in San Francisco or a Yelp elite in Dublin. Um, you really could connect with people because you had this common thread. And that is a brand that we built. OK. At its finest, a great brand makes you want to root for it to win. And an event with a great brand makes you want to attend. Uh, it's important to really connect the two in order to make the most impact. At Yelp, our mission was to connect people, real people with great local businesses. Our event, our event program actually reflected this mission directly by bringing this core community of elite Yelpers out to experience lo special local businesses, exclusive experiences. Um, and we'd partner with businesses that believed in our mission, aligned to the story we wanted to tell. We weren't going to Olive Garden for elite events. We were going to the cool underground bar that just opened in you know, a new neighborhood. Um, we really wanted to 
create radical stories and encourage sharing and virality um, through these special experiences. So when you're thinking about creating a brand for your community, really look closely at what your brand is for your company. What are the mission? What are the values? OK. So Patreon, a little different than Yelp. Uh, Patreon, our mission is to fund the creative class. We are in this business with you. For those who are unfamiliar, Patreon powers membership business, as I mentioned, giving creators the tools to, they need to acquire, engage, uh, energize, and they're, they're paying patrons. So patrons pay a monthly subscription fee, um, and fans, just like Paul, uh, really want that content. And so um, we built out this model for a closer look, to get the closer look into their creative journey. So if you're a big fan, you know, if you love the band U2 in, in theory, or Alt-Shift-X, um, you want to get that special content, and so you pay a monthly subscription fee to really connect with that creator. Now, based in San Francisco, our team is actually made up of a lot of creators ourselves. So if we're saying we're in this with you, we want to really mean it. Um, and we really have this passion and care for the creative community and believe that they should be funded. So that's at its core. What's kind of the origin story? So it's helpful that Jack Conti, our founder and CEO, is a YouTube creator. He's struggled with these people. Um, he was looking for a solution to a problem back in 2013. Millions of people were loving his videos and subscribing, but he was only making like $100, $200 a month on that, and it just wasn't sustainable. Um, so he had this idea, what, what if I could connect directly with my community? What if I didn't have YouTube standing in between me and my fans? Um, and so he connected with his old college roommate, Sam, who built out the first mock-ups of the site. Um, you know, fast forward five years, and today we have over 100,000 creators on our platform uh, collective, who have collectively earned over $350 million directly from their patrons. That's an emotional story, and that's a great brand. So who is our community? Like, unlike Yelp with Patreon, our community is actually business owners, entrepreneurs. Um, whereas with Yelp, I was really trying to build community among customers, people using the site. Um, and so now that we've explored kind of the brand story, let's ask some questions about our community where we can build a customized package, or a customized event program. So who is our community? Unique issue with Patreon is that we have over 50 categories of creators on our platform. Yes, there's podcasters, yes, there's video creators, but there's also Magic the Gathering card designers, and uh, there's runners, there's um, visual artists, there's musicians, there's so many different types of creators out there. So that can be a challenge. We'll come back to that. Uh, what does our community want? Well, they want to get paid. Uh, so ultimately, going back to our mission, uh, thinking about like what do they need? They want to be able to continue to create their art in a sustainable way. Okay, so that's like identifying more entrepreneurial um, and education and business support. Okay, where is our community? Everywhere. Uh, it's a lot of digital communities. So um, you know the challenge is like, how do we connect with them if they're so spread out across um, the world? When is the best time to reach them? Again, time zones. Uh, a little bit difficult. So creating content that's sustainable, digital, is also important. But their time is also valuable. So they'll travel to an event like this if they, can, if they feel that their ultimate challenge is being met and, they're, and we're actually addressing what they want and through relevant content. So how can we add value through our events? Seems like if they want to make more money, we should probably help them do that. Um, and so really, our event programming zeroes in on the, the specific challenges of our creators in a curated way. OK. So some of you have heard uh, Sarah Rose and I speaking about Patricon. Um, it is a three-day annual event, or we're in our third year. It's an invite-only conference. So again, this is kind of a unique uh, conference experience. I think most of you probably do public conferences that you're trying to sell tickets and promote to the public. It's, I actually think that's easier. <laughs> um, with our community, we're actually creating an event um, 
that is super curated content. The programming is specific if you've already built a membership business. It's specific to creators. Um, so we're bringing them all together in Los Angeles. Again, the where. Um, Los Angeles and New York are big hubs for us, so we ha had to identify that as a location that made sense. Um, and we do this invite-only conference um, so that we can really zero in on this community, almost like the elites, as you mentioned before with Yelp elites, this like core community that we think that, can, that we can make a real difference in their monthly revenue. Um, with this event, I also want to go back to one of our brand uh, comments there, in this with you. Um, so when we're doing a conference that is like an annual event, we want to take a holistic approach to the conference and understand what is the creator experience? What is that community experience? So we actually built out kind of a pillar system where um, we include wellness and self-care in this. A lot of the feedback we got from our community was <coughs> they're constantly creating this digital content and they're burning out and they're not feeling like this is sustainable. And that's a problem for Patreon, right? And so, and that's a problem for our Patreon community. And so we really want to focus in on like the holistic experience for a creator um, and find a happy balance for them. So we focus a lot of our programming on that. Collaborate and inspire. Again, uh, I think many people touched on this early, already today, the opportunity to find inspiration and to collaborate with people within your community is a huge drive for events. Um, and then education and business, back to you know, what are the challenges facing creators today and what, what value can we offer through our event? Okay, um, we are also doing another event series and this is roughly about every month and we actually go to different cities around the US. Um, so far it's just been the US, but we'll see. Um, and so Patreon U, Boot camp is something where we actually have a very specialized approach. We have under 10 creators in the room. We go to their city. We do deep dive profile reviews where we, like we say, these are the actions you can take to double your revenue. Um, and so the value proposition is there. We come to them. We address exactly what they want. And we also get that information ahead of time so that we can prepare on our end. So it's a very one-to-one -one approach. While Patreon is a many-to-many, -many, this is a one-to-one -one approach. And then, of course, with a community that's so spread out, doing a lot of different things, web events are really a terrific addition to our event program. So for Yelp, we created webinars to help coach and educate business owners. Um, that was separate from the uh, Yelp Elite community that I worked with. But at Patreon, we do a monthly hang time. You can see uh, the monthly hang time gets a lot of comments. Uh, it's usually our CEO and Taryn who usually runs those icebreakers at our all hands meetings. Um, and so this one to many approach really should be regular and reliable. Um, having it monthly, even weekly for your, your base is a really great way to build a relationship and because it's digital, it's recordable, it's accessible to all members of the community, you don't have to charge a high fee for it. It's just it makes it more accessible and everybody has a voice. So we feature interviews with successful creators, we do product uh, announcements, um, we discuss new features, and uh, creators can actually ask questions directly to the CEO and they answer live on the spot. Um, so really this was like, this is a great way to like have a monthly connection with your community and build out the idea of a community as a brand. Um, and this is just the kind of a wrap-up email I wanted to include in here. So again, following up after the event doesn't just happen with in-person events. It should happen with webinars too, uh, where you can actually do a breakdown of like everything that happens. People don't want to dive into an hour-long video unless you actually take the time to like call out the things that they might be interested in. Um, and so this, we can run polls through this and test ideas um, through this follow-up process. Okay, so we've identified communities, we've asked some questions. Being intentional, I think intentionality is something that we talk a lot about in the event community. Um, and it's something that, you know, last night at dinner I actually was talking with Kim over there who noted, noted that while intention is nice, unless you make a strategic and you bake in tactics into your plan, it's just an idea. 
Um, so when you're being intentional, I just want to call out that it's helpful to build your intentions into your overall goals, your ROI, so that you follow through with them in your actions. It's easy to intend to do something, but with the million other things that we want to do, um, if you don't track your successes there, then it doesn't necessarily follow through. Okay, so a lot of ways you can be intentional. Um, venue is a good example of one, whether it's venue selection. Say a venue has been written up in your town for you know, uh, being really inclusive and going out there and trying to find more diverse events. Or their messaging is, is one that you really, really respect. Um, that's all important. If, if, if the venue aligns with your mission, hopefully you guys can see that. If the venue aligns with your mission, great. Um, there's also like venue restrictions and things that you want to consider. You want to look for, if you want to have more moms in attendance or be family friendly, a mother's room is really useful. Um, I know a lot of conferences have offered daycare, which is really, really fantastic if you can afford it. Um, accessibility, so can, is there an elevator in your venue or is it stairs only? These are things that you should always consider. Closed captioning, um, can you offer, um, you know, slides to follow up, wide walkways, quiet spaces. Be considerate and intentional with your community and they will appreciate it. Um, the programming itself. So choose your own adventure programs are fun, uh, especially for my particular community at Patreon. Uh, we want to be able to give people the flexibility in the programming so that they know what they're getting into before and we're being cognizant of their time before they get into it. Um, but also with the program, have long breaks, have a lounge, mix it up, do some stretches. Um, think about what it's like to sit in a room all day and, and be really intentional with the, your use of their time. Um, and then also the moments, being intentional with moments. At PatreCon this year, we're instead of just doing gift bags as we normally do, we're doing a merch booth where people can pick out the color shirt they want. They can pick out the different buttons and stickers so that you're being respectful of like, hey, we don't want to just like choose for you. Why don't you participate in this experience with us? Um, messaging, we've all touched on code of conduct. is super crucial for your staff to be trained on the code of conduct. I just want to call that out one more time. Um, and also being goal oriented, making sure that all your staff knows what the purpose is, who your community is, um, and why they're there. Uh, and then tech, I think, is something that we also address. Um, having a community forum, some people use Slack. XOXO does a fantastic job of using Slack during their event and before their event um, to create community meetups. Um, and then flexibility is the final point. <laughs> um, beautiful weather, go on a boat ride. Get it? Um, so you, if you have smaller groups, change the venue to a smaller group, so smaller venue location. You know, flexibility is really important and it seems a, a, opposed to intention, but it actually isn't if you're being intentionally flexible. Okay, uh, so when I was Yelp, at Yelp, um, we were dedicated, our mission was, we were dedicated to supporting local business community. So after Hurricane Sandy, now that seems like a long time ago. Uh, businesses struggled to recover after being closed for nearly a week in downtown Manhattan. This was specific to my community, so um, we really wanted to focus on getting people to spend their money at these local businesses, highlighting the organizations and nonprofits that were helping support them, um, and really th thinking about like what your mission is and identifying like different programs you can help you, that help you get there, um, even on the fly. And so this is an example of something we're building in um, specifically for the venue for PatreCon in Los Angeles. Um, so what we knew, we knew we were gonna increase the attendance size of our conference from 100 to 400. Um, and so when you do something like that, you also have to be respectful of like, hey, maybe people liked meeting in smaller spaces and maybe they'll have a bad reaction to being in this bigger space. So when we went and looked at venues, we knew we wanted to have a lot of breakout rooms. And if you've ever done a venue search, finding five breakout rooms in a conference space is not easy. Um, but it was our intention to do this. We really wanted to make it very workshoppy, and we also wanted to have this creator lounge. Um, and so this is an example of a space that we have a 15,000 square foot space for 400 people because we want to create this intentional relaxing atmosphere where people can connect, opportunities to hang out, take a breather, step out of the room. Um, these are all really important when you're thinking about a conference. 
I've also been to so many conferences that exclusively feature white male speakers. Um, that narrative is narrow. <laughs> so when we went into our conference, we went back and looked at you know, feedback from past events, we were like, this needs to change and we need to be representative of our community and community first. And so we set out to have at least 50% of our speakers on stage from, uh, as un from underrepresented groups um, and actively recruited speakers rather than just taking submissions. The submissions I did get, we're not diverse. <laughs> so, you know, whether or not that means that like you, like people are, who have already always spoke at conferences are more comfortable submitting themselves to be speakers at conferences, by being directed and intentional with who you go after as a speaker at your conference, that'll guide the conversation and you're just gonna have a better conference and better conference programming. Um, so we also include pronoun pins and stickers to encourage folks to share their preferences. It's important to remind attendees that everyone is welcome, back to the code of conduct, uh, and that all voices should be heard. Um, and this just makes that conversation easier. Um, Okay, so I mentioned before at Patreon, we have a lot of different types of creators. Um, so there's no one size fits all program. So when we did this conference, and if you have a community with a lot of different people from different backgrounds, um, it's really important to create workshops. So we have four main stage talks, four panels, and 24 workshops. So you can see that as we go through this, we are also considering our pillars. So that really helped us make sure that we weren't just focusing all on like, reward tiers on Patreon or what we want to say. Um, we were really being considerate about a holistic approach uh, to the conference program, so there was something for everyone. If you wanted to just go wellness the whole way, you can because it's kind of this choose your own adventure uh, program. So we help people be humans through our events. Everyone in this room has a story about a connection they've made at an event. We wear badges and name tags to help us connect with each other. Whether your event is many to many, a one to one, or sometimes those it's it's sometimes those in between moments when you're sitting at the lunch table or riding on a boat <laughs> that are really the most memorable and impactful. And I think what Hugh was saying before, people can record talks and, and uh, speakers, inspiration is important, but it's also those opportunities for connecting and being human. Consider your, your audience as humans. Um, so I actually, my background is uh, in psychology. I actually majored in psychology and then suddenly got in the startup world. Um, and so I like to apply kind of psychological principles to my, uh, to my regular life and my regular job. Um, so I recently, you know, if you are interested in human psychology, there's a lot you can interpret for your events. So I recommend um, listening to some podcasts. I can give you recommendations later. Um, but recently I listened to one podcast that talked about uh, attention restoration theory, which is this idea that people can concentrate better after spending time in nature or even looking at scenes of nature. So I brought this up during a planning meeting for our conference and we were able to brainstorm some ways to bring in plants or natural surroundings to our venue to make it feel more refreshed, make people feel more refreshed during the conference. So the goal, I think, for everyone in this room is to create better and more fulfilling experiences for our community. It's great to acknowledge that we are working for humans, <laughs> and that human psychology is at play, um, and being considerate of those things. Okay, fostering connection. It's why we're all here. Um, so when you think about it, this is probably more logical to everybody here, you know, beforehand. Um, if you think of an event that only happens in real time, then you're missing the point. The anticipation, the conversations, and most importantly, the conversations tomorrow are the reason we are all here and doing these events. Um, there's a lot of different ways you can build in um, anticipation before the event, whether it's you know just regular messaging or building forum, linking to so socials um, for your speakers so that people can connect with your speakers ahead of time, having revealed event attendee lists or building Slack channels, um, encourage meetups. Um, you know, either choose ambassadors to run the meetups um, or uh, run your own. You know, giving people opportunity to have things to do outside of your event. And during, again, identification stickers, 
uh, uh, scuba diving sticker over here, um, space, find spaces in the venue that people can are encouraged to have meetings and talk. Um, and be a host. I think that's also really important. I love when I meet somebody who's just a great host and representative because your job is to introduce people. You are the connector in your community and sometimes you're the only person in the room that they know. So you kind of have to be on and you have to kind of participate and you can't be running around trying to get the lights on and doing all those things uh, during the event. Um, you're just going to lose the magic. And then after the event, control the conversation. Um, we were talking about this earlier. If something goes wrong, you actually get to say afterwards, didn't we have a great time, everybody? It was so amazing that we did all this stuff, and this was great, and this was great, and this was great, and this was great. When people walk, when you walk out of a movie with a friend, what, the first thing you ask is, so what did you think? You want validation, and so the people who attended your event want validation that they got as much as they could through the event. And so really controlling that story and giving them everything that you might have missed during the event so that you have this like full, full experience and, and full conversation with them. So finally, earlier I had you guys all self-identify yourself and share with each other. So let's not be strangers. Um, we're all part of this amazing event managing and marketing community. Um, so pat yourself on the back. You all work really hard um, and you're doing great. <laughs>